you don't need to model everything in Revit. That's a pretty common mistake which a lot of Revit users are doing and just imagine that you need to model all those meshes in your Revit file, it will create tons of polygons, your file is going to be heavier and way slower for working. We should make it on the other way around and that way is to create the textures actually to create materials. And as you can see here, I have a couple of elements in front of me and for example, this one is completely circular transparent. So the mesh is actually the circular. And by the way, for those two elements, I was using different materials. I'm going to show you how it's made. This one has a different cut out while this one has squared one and on this element here you see that only one side is transparent while other is not so how i made it for that i created some of materials as you can see so i have one a it's assigned to this element here so this is one a then this is one b and then one of those two is also assigned to this part here. This element here is uh, architect 3 while this O2 is related to this part, to this part uh, on this curtain wall at the back. So this is O2. But let me open Enscape and let me show you something. So in Enscape, you see that all materials I created, they work perfectly. So it means that I really reduced a lot of polygons in my models, but I could have appearance which is proper. But in Enscape, this material doesn't show correctly. So you see that it's solid and you will realize why. While that material, of course, looks co completely okay in Revit. I know that not a lot of you are using Enscape, but just if you are using, keep this in mind and I will show you straight away why is like that. So first of all, let me explain you what I have done and how it's been made. So I've told you that I have two different materials here. Just a second to zoom in those two parts so we can see if I do any changes. The way to do this, to do this is actually to just create material and then you can either add cutout image or you can create the transparency map. So in this case, I was using the same thing, but with a cutout, if I just turn it off, look at this. So it's going to be solid. And then if I turn it on, we are going to have that cutout. And you probably wonder how we can control the size of, for example, this, this circle. So we need to click on this image and then you see what are the borders of this image. So 100, 100, if I just make it 50, 50 then the circles are going to become smaller but what's the difference between cutout and transparency and just be aware of one thing so you see here that what's black that's cut out what's white that's something which is going to remain in our in our model element but if i go to transparent there is something we need to understand first of all I will go back to the original picture, we'll click OK, and then in Revit, in this case, it works the opposite than, than the cutout. So what's black is going to remain, what's, out is, what's white is going to be transparent. And if you would like to have the same appearances here, we need to go to invert image. So what's white is going to be transparent, what's black is going to remain. And with the transparency, we can also control the amount of transparency. So let's hit apply. And then you see how it looks like. So, of course, if I go to 96 or, or less, it doesn't matter. We are on this way controlling the amount of our, of our transparency. And it's up to you which one of those two you would like to use, you would like to prefer. Uh, for me, it's more natural when I would like to create a cutout just to use cutout than, than the transparency. And actually for this O3, let me show you what I was using there. So it's the it's been made the same way as RKTZ01. So RKTZ03 using the cutout. I'm just using the different texture. And all those textures I was I'm using from the Autodesk, from the Revit. So you're going to get them once you install Revit. 
and of course if you would like to one more time just adjust its size you can only just adjust the the size of this image so let's say 75 75 and then it's going to become smaller or bigger depending on what you did but what's going on and what happened with this one so why we do not have this one visible in our enscape so for all of you who are working with enscape you have to keep in mind that the procedural maps are not going to be shown in in enscape and uh, you don't need to if you're just working with revit you don't need to necessarily use uh, just the textures you can also actually the maps you can also use those uh, procedural maps so if you if you would like to make the square as i did first of all you need to click here and then you need to pick some of those pr procedural maps in this case i took tiles and let's open this one so what's black it's going to be cut out you remember what's white is going to remain so in this case you see that i have 100 millimeters uh, the square and then i have four four divisions inside which means that this one is 25 by 25 millimeters and i mean this works completely well but when i go to section for example here and when i turn on realistic so everything seems fine but let's say that i would like to present this in a in a drawing as well and if i would like to go to hidden then this is not something we would like to have and if i go to find a visual style then nothing changes so what we can do for example to show let's say this grid here and you have to understand that for example for this o2 material when we go to graphics we have nothing for a surface pattern so the the appearance is related for our rendering but the graphic is related for our drawing how it's going to appear there and if i just go here to the foreground but you need to remember one thing I will just go back to appearance that we have 25 by 25 millimeters the square so this is 100 millimeters divided by 4 is 25 so in the graphics i will go to the foreground pattern let's go to model and then here i'm gonna take one of those squared let's duplicate this one and let's make it 25 so 25 by 25 let's hit ok so now we see it you see it and if I just go to the realistic, you see that it's completely the same. And if you would like to know more about procedural maps and how to create amazing materials in Revit, just take a look at this tutorial.